Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress. Thank you so much for joining me today if you're new and thank you so much for watching again if you are a subscriber already. For today's video, I'm joining again with the lovely Becky from Notes from the Sewing Room. If you remember back in the summer, Becky and I did a collaboration video where we used the same fabric to make a different garment each and then we compared what we'd made at the end and it was so much fun. And we talked about making another collaboration video but time went on and Becky has a little baby, she's had baby William now so she's obviously been very busy um, but we thought that now things have settled down a little bit for Becky we would join together again and bring you our next collaboration video. So for this video Becky and I are both going to be making a version of the Billy sweatshirt by Tilling the Buttons which is this pattern here which I'm sure you've already seen. Um, I talked about it in my most recent makes video because I have made one version of it already. Um, I absolutely love this pattern. When it came out, I just thought um, it was right up my street and I couldn't wait to try it. So I'm really excited to be making another version of it today. So just to remind you of my first version, this is the version that I made recently. Um, and I talk more about this in my recent makes video. So I'll just link that in case you want to um, go over and have a watch of that afterwards. Uh, but this is my first version of the Billy sweatshirt and I went for the most basic kind of style of it uh, just with a normal sleeve and a normal um, cuff and everything. I didn't go for the blue sleeve for that one. Um, but what attracted me most to the pattern was the balloon sleeve version of the pattern so that's what I'm going to be making today. Um, and I'm going to be sewing it from this lovely... It's like a stretchy fleece back sweatshirt fabric um, and it's got quite a lot of stretch in it which is really nice uh, but it is really soft um, and fleecy and cosy on the back so I think that will be lovely um, for winter time because it will be nice and cosy and warm and also it's actually quite thin so I'm hoping that it's going to be okay to sew on the sewing machine and the overlocker. So that will be my version. I believe that Becky is doing a very exciting hack with the pattern and she's going to be turning her Billy sweatshirt into a cardigan. So I will just hand over to Becky now so she can talk a little bit about her version of what she's going to be making. Hi everyone, Becky here from Notes from the Sewing Room. Thank you so much Sally for doing the sew along with me. I really do appreciate it and I'm so looking forward to making my cardigan today. I say cardigan, I've decided to hack the Billy jumper into a cardigan so please do check out my video when you've watched Sally's today and I'll guide you through how I am joining two Tilly patterns together that is the Bertha cardigan which I'm a big fan of from the Make It Simple book and also the brand new Tilly and the Buttons Billy jumper as well. I do love a hack project so I hope you're going to enjoy this one as much as I think I'm going to. I can't wait to hear all about how she got on with that and see how it turned out at the end. So I'm actually hoping to make most of my pattern on the overlocker today. Um, I will be doing my usual tacking in the neckband and the cuffs and everything on the sewing machine before I sew them on the overlocker. Um, just to be safe and make sure that everything's sort of um, in properly before I go ahead and slice anything with the overlocker. <laughs> it just makes me feel a little bit better doing it that way. Just before I get started sewing, I'll talk about what I'm wearing today. Um, so I'm actually wearing a knitted um, make today. I'm wearing my downtown cardigan by All About Amy. Um, and this is a cardigan that I actually knitted last year, but I haven't worn that much. Um, I don't know why really, it's really chunky. Um, I get quite cold, so it's always good to have a chunky cardigan, but this is actually really warm. <laughs> and I'm wearing it now and feeling quite hot in it already, and it is freezing cold outside, so that shows you how warm it is. Um, and I'm actually just wearing it with a simple sort of gray Agnes t-shirt, which I made in the summer. So the first step of the pattern is to sew the shoulder seams together, nice and easy, or it should be anyway. So I'm gonna do that straight on the overlocker. Um, I haven't been very good with my threads today. I haven't got a matching green colour for this um, sweatshirt in fabric. So I'm going to use a black thread on my sewing machine to sew anything that needs to be sewn properly and to do the twin needling around the edges. But I've got my overlooker threaded up in white thread so the inside's going to be white. I probably should have changed it to black but I don't really feel like re-threading the overlocker. No one should see it really anyway so I'm thinking that I should get away with that. 
Um, so that's what I'm going to do first, uh, so I will get sewing. Yeah, my shoulder seams are all sewn now, um, I'll give you a little view of my new overlocker and how it stitches. Um, I love it so much so far, I feel like I'm getting a bit more familiar with it now, I've made a couple of things on it um, and getting the tension a little bit better and things, so that's really nice. So I'm on to the neckband next, uh, probably the worst bit for me, I still hate doing neckbands. Um, I'm actually using the sweatshirt fabric for all of my cuffs, so I'm not using ribbing this time. So I um, was a bit worried that I wouldn't have enough stretch in my fabric for all of those pieces, and I mentioned that to Becky and she came up with a brilliant idea of just cutting the pieces a little bit bigger. So that's what I've done. Um, I've just added a centimetre onto my cuffs, my waistband and my neckband just to give me a bit more room to play with because the fabric hasn't got that much stretch. And with my first version, I used the same sweatshirt in fabric for the cuffs um, and neckbands and everything on my first version. It was quite difficult to get the, um, the, like, the wrist pieces into the cuff, so um, definitely a good idea to add on a bit of extra length to those pieces if you're using the same such as in fabric as your pattern too. So thanks for that Becky. On to fitting the neckband piece now, um, I'll let you know how that goes in a minute. Neckband is all done, there is. I've just given it a twin needle around there. Um, it's really hard to be neat with a twin needle, isn't it? So I hope I've done an okay job there, especially because it's so obvious where my stitching is. Um, but I think it looks okay. Um, I always wonder with neckbands whether I should have stretched it a little bit more, but I was a bit worried with this. If I stretched it too tightly, it might not go over my head, but I've tried it on and it does go over my head. So that's good news. Um, you can see where I've done the white overlocking stitch in here. So I think at the end, I might have a go at putting some binding around that bit of the neckband, um, like you sometimes see in ready to wear sweatshirts. I have got some jersey binding, so I might just try and put that in, make it look a little bit neater at the end. Um, but I'm really pleased with how it's looking so far. I maybe should mention that with the neckband, I did cut it like the opposite stretch way um, to the way I cut the body, just because there seemed to be a bit more stretch that way. So I cut the body and the sleeves and everything, um, selvage to selvage and then with the neckband I cut it in the opposite direction um, and I think that helped with the stretch um, so yeah that seems to be fine so far so I think I'm on to the sleeves next um, which is really exciting because I'm looking forward to seeing how these balloon sleeves are actually created so I will get on with that and have a look at what I'm doing and I'll let you know. Well, so far so good with my project. I seem to be getting on with the hack quite nicely. And I would say so far I'm finding that the amount of gathering on the sleeves is a little bit of a mission, but in the instructions it does say to sew three rows of gathering stitches. That's for the sleeve head and also for the cuff section. So I would say do do, do that. Do sew the three lines rather than you know one or two because I think it does add for that extra bit of dramatic effect if you do do the three lines instead. So I think those balloon sleeves are a real kind of state piece so I've, I've you know I've really enjoyed you know working on that so far as an overall top to wear should I say cardigan in my case it does seem to be coming together really nicely I think it's going to go with a lot of things and joining two patterns together is always really fun even though sometimes it doesn't necessarily work out I'm crossing my fingers that this does actually work out for me on this occasion and hopefully it's something that I can wear with skirts and jeans and possibly dresses as well when it's all finished. To show you the giant balloon sleeve head. <laughs> they look absolutely massive, don't they? Um, I was really lucky cutting these out because I think the pattern says that you need about 1.8 meters to make the size I was making, which is a size three. And I only had a meter and a half of this fabric and I was lucky enough to get it out. I squeezed it out. Um, but these sleeves, you can see how wide they are, probably. Oh, a bit hard to show you on the camera, but they're very wide um, and very high, obviously, because you've got to have that puffy gather there. Um, so, yeah, I was lucky to get that out of a metre and a half. Um, I think it's just because the fabric was quite wide. 
Um, right, I'm onto the gathering. So I need to sew three rows of gathering around the sleeve head and three rows of gathering along the cuff just to bring it in at the cuff and the sleeve head. So that's what I'm going to do now. So this is the head of the balloon sleeve all sewn in now. So what I did was um, I did the three rows of gathering like it said to do in the pattern, which really helped keep the gathers stable, but all together it's quite a full gather. So with anything thicker than this kind of fabric, I think you'd struggle to gather it very neatly. And it does say in the pattern not to use anything too thick. Um, so I tacked that in and then I tacked it in again on the sewing machine and then I overlocked the sleeve head in. I'll just show you and that's how that's sewn in so I'm really pleased with that it's looking really nice I really like this gathered sleeve if you've made the Agnes top it's very sim similar in construction to putting the sleeve head in on the Agnes top so I'm sure if you've made that then you'll find this absolutely fine because it's pretty much the same just using a different kind of fabric so next I think I need to sew up the side seams and then gather in the cuffs um, to the cuffs cuffs to the cuffs, the bottom of the sleeve to the cuff. So um, that's what I'm going to do now. by far the most fiddliest part of the pattern so far. Um, I tried to pin as much as I could and then I tried to sew in between the gathering stitches that I'd done, but um, I don't think there was any way of avoiding sewing over some of the gathering stitches. So I did have to spend a bit of time unpicking, unpicking the gathering stitches there. Um, but this is how the sleeve is looking. You can see the cuff. And I am getting a bit worried about this fabric and whether it's going to make me look like a ginormous chameleon or something or one of those poisonous frogs. <laughs> um, the more I'm sort of sewing with this, the more I'm thinking, am I going to look like a big lizard wearing this? Um, because there's so much volume here and definitely because I've used the same fabric for the cuffs, it's quite a lot of print. Um, but as far as the pattern goes, I'm absolutely loving how the sleeves are looking. Um, it definitely wasn't as tricky as I thought it was going to be to do all of that gathering. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with that. So the final stage is to just get the hem band on. Let's get into the stage of the afternoon now where it's getting a bit dark. And also I'm aware that I need to finish up for the school run. Um, but I've only got to put the hem band on, so hopefully I might just get that done before I need to go out again. Hi again, I have now finished my garment. I can't believe it. I've kind of done a little bit here and there. I seem to have done sort of 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there, and I've eventually got it done. It is sometimes difficult to fit in sewing with a new baby, but I'm doing it and I'm trying to make the most of nap times. So if you would like to see how I got on with my cardigan overall, please do check out my video in full so you can see. However, I will give you a little bit of a sneaky peek of my end cardigan. I have used a Ponte Roma fabric, which is a kind of light to medium weight fabric. It is an animal print fabric that I've had in my stash for ages, so I'm pleased that I've actually got an opportunity to use it this time. And yeah, it's really nice. I'm going to slip this on so you can see it. I will show you in more detail on my video, as I said, but it's really nice. It comes down to around about my hip area, and I just absolutely love the balloon sleeves. So you probably can't really see the print from there, so I'll just hold my arm up so you can see. 
but yeah, it's really, really nice. So I've really enjoyed making the project overall. So please do check out my video so you can see in more detail how I did the hat when you've watched Sally's video, of course. And I'll look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much, Sally, for letting me be involved in your video today. I've really enjoyed it and I hope that we can do another collaboration in the future. So I'm back from school right now. I managed to get this finished in time. So I just thought I'd quickly um, tell you how I found it. So here's my finished sweatshirt. Um, and you can see these amazing sleeves. <laughs> they are really quite large. Um, I love them though. So you can see here the cuff um, and all the gathering in there. Um, and then you've obviously got this big puffy shoulder here at the top as well. Um, and there's my neckband. And yeah, I'm just really, really pleased with it. I'm so happy to have this pattern in my life. I think it's just gonna be such a versatile um, pattern to make. I love the fact that you can do it, you can make it really dramatic with these sleeves uh, or you can just make a normal sweatshirt. I'm really looking forward to trying the sweatshirt dress actually because I think that would be a really good thing to have in my wardrobe. So uh, points to note on this pattern, I would say um, this fabric that I use is not a very heavy sweatshirt fabric and I would say it's probably just about right for um, this kind of balloon sleeve version, particularly if you want the dramatic sleeves, because I think um, if you had, obviously if you used anything thinner or like a viscose jersey or maybe even a cotton jersey, it would have a little bit more drape and not so much structure. Um, uh, as it is, it's quite kind of um, holds its own shape sort of thing. So I think it is quite good if you want those sleeves. Um, and obviously do be aware that um, the sleeves are really quite big. Um, so if you don't want such a big puppy sleeve, you could always take some of the um, volume out of the shoulder or out of the cuff. Um, I quite like it. When I tried this one, I did think, oh my goodness, those sleeves are absolutely huge and I felt like I was wearing shoulder pads. I'll put it on in a minute just so that you can see. Um, but after wearing it for a little while, a few minutes and looking at myself in the mirror, I thought, well, actually, I quite like it. So it's something different, isn't it? You can obviously have the plain version or you can have something a little bit more dramatic. Um, I would say when you're gathering in uh, the top, actually the top and the cuff, there's quite a lot of fabric there and it does get quite thick. So I used my walking foot to sew um, the cuff and the shoulder seam in, and then I overlocked afterwards and um, you obviously don't have to do that if you don't have a walking foot but I do and I just feel like my machine handles the weight of the fabric better if I use that walking foot to um, manage all of those layers but the sewing machine actually sewed it fine with the walking foot so that was really good um, yeah and this fabric is lovely it's really soft um, and really cozy it's from Higgs and Higgs. I'll link it down below if they still have any in stock. I think it comes in a cotton jersey and a fleece back jersey, so you can have it in a more sort of t-shirt weight um, fabric if you want to. So I'll just pop this on now just to show you what it looks like um, so you can see how the finished result looks. So here I am in my sweatshirt, my finished sweatshirt, um, and you can see what I mean about the sleeves. They are massive, um, but I think I like them. I think maybe next time, especially if I make this version from another sweatshirt fabric, I might think about taking some of this out or um, even just sizing down maybe, just to take some of the weight out of the sleeves. Um, but as it is on this version, I actually really like it and I quite like the sort of contrast between the big um, like fancy sleeves and the casual style sweatshirt fabric that it's made from. So. Yeah, I really, really like this. I think I'll definitely be making more. I think I'd love just a plain black version, actually. Um, so that's something to think about. I'll stand up so you can see the bottom bit as well. I've actually turned it under because it did come up quite long and it's not too fitted in there. I think the light's gone a bit funny now. It's quite dark and I've had to put the electric light on. So I will just take a couple of nicer photos and pop them in at the end of the video, just so you can see, hopefully in a bit clearer light, what the sweatshirt looks like. Um, but yes, I am really pleased with it. So thank you for watching. Do let me know below if you've made a Billy sweatshirt and how you found the sleeves, how you found the pattern, what you think of it. Um, 
just let me know how you got on with it and don't forget to pop over and watch Becky's video as well. I'm really excited to see how she made her cardigan version of this pattern. I think that's a really clever hack and probably one that I'll be copying myself in the not too distant future. I'll link Becky's video below and um, if you're interested I will link our previous collaboration video below so, so that you can go and watch that one. I would love you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and do give the video a like if you've enjoyed it and I will look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!